And with us right now, we've got AJ Rolsey, the one and only AJ Rolsey. Uh, and AJ, you are the, uh, you're an author, and you're the founder of the Core Marketing Method, and you're found on the web at ajrolsey.com. You know, one book that I think we're gonna talk quite a bit about uh, is uh, The Drowning Entrepreneur, How to Unlock More Time, Money, and Your Best Entrepreneurial Life. Uh, simply because I think that a lot of folks that are listening to this podcast, you know, they, they love what they do. They know they're making an impact in the world, but right. it's very easy to kind of get sucked into it and uh, maybe lose that lifestyle that you want. Or maybe you say, you know what, I'm going to keep making sacrifices right now. I'm going to keep on sacrificing. And then someday I'll right. get that life that I really am doing all, making all these sacrifices for. So I'd really love to get into kind of like timing and knowing what phase of business we're in. You're right. When, when can so, you enjoy, John, so much enjoy life? <laughs> but first, of all, AJ, just yeah, thank I, you so much for joining us. No, of course. I, I, I think uh, my connection might have broken up a little bit there, but you know, it's it's an absolute pleasure to be with you. I love your program, so thanks for having me on. Yeah. But um, you're right. So entrepreneurs typically, and I'm like this, I'm imagining you might be too, Josh, and people listening, we probably have business somehow woven through our DNA. We can't help but want to be in business. It's sort of right. the way we're built, right? And we feel, often we feel purposeful and enthusiastic. But here's something that's really interesting. So I, I've really had a split life, Josh. I've, I've worked in uh, my own startups and small businesses. I had my first small business with employees when I was just 12 years of age. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I followed that path and I've had several of my own since then. But at the same time, I've also pursued a, a, a role as a global marketer for some of the world's largest and most profitable companies. And so I, I've had a really, I think, um, great opportunity to see two different ways of viewing business and of viewing life in general and the truth is that there's strengths and weaknesses to both but what you just described about having this idea of something great and wonderful off in the future but day to day getting stuck in some kind yeah. of a, a, a pattern this is very very common and and thanks for referring to my new book because actually this draws from a, uh, a really large study that i did which was basically around five countries around the world and more than a thousand business owners and what we found is that while there were six common desires for why people started a business and many of those things you were just touching on, you know, that, that feeling of inspiration or, or just always wanting to be their own boss or wanting to create wealth, whatever it might have been, pretty soon after getting into business, if, if that business owner was fortunate enough to actually survive the first year, after that, business owners really commonly, and I'm talking about more than eight out of 10, say that on a day-to-day -day basis, they experience four common worries. And this really has the effect of kind of sucking joy out of their existence much more than it should. And so, um, you know, what the final one you just alluded to, but the first three actually were, uh, and this is in the, the order that we hear about them, <laughs> is money worries. And it's not just about, oh, yeah. not, not just about cash flow. that's a common issue, but often it's about people just saying, I don't wanna deal with money. I don't wanna chase accounts. It's just my least, you know, I like the idea of numbers and growth, but there's aspects to money that is a common worry. Uh, and in a similar vein, they talk about time worry. So, you know, I'm spending all day putting out fires or engaged in low ROI activity, you know, spinning wheels and putting out spot fires. And this uh, kind of time worry effect can can really uh, take away from that joy and inspiration of business ownership. Yeah, and then no kidding. And then the final two, and you, you alluded to one, which was really the last one, but the, but the third one that people talk about sometimes is, this is a bit of a catch-all phrase, but I call it the buck stops with me anxiety, which means I've either got imposter syndrome or perhaps I uh, you know I have a nagging doubt that I don't have everything stitched together where you know when you're an employee Josh uh, someone else has that problem but right. when, you, when you're the man or woman in charge it all lands with you right so people report that this sometimes can cause some anxiety as a business owner and then the final one exactly as you suggested people say I have a dream for my business it's a vague idea it might not may not even be written down but just a hope to have a really prosperous thriving business but there's a lack of a clear path forward. How do I get from today to that destination? So those four things together, uh, you know, more, it's about 85% of business owners report that this plagues them more frequently than not and, and really causes them to kind of have a reduced sense of joy as a business owner. So uh, I was not happy with that. It's a very common story. I've, I've been in business myself, as I said, and I can attest to at different times having all of those four. Yeah. Um, so before we, I, I want to talk about maybe some action items on things that, that we can do. Sure. Um, so AJ, how did you find yourself? I mean, what were you doing before you owned your first business? 
Right. Well, as I said, I had uh, had very small enterprises as a kid because, like many people, I've just got entrepreneurship flowing through my veins. But, but uh, I, I kind of pursued a, a, a few different tasks. Josh, unlike you folk living in the U.S., where you're lucky to have entrepreneurship as a, a really well-respected uh, career path. When I was a young person, I'm in my mid 40s now. But when I was a kid in Australia, part of our culture there is that if you wanted to say that you're an entrepreneur, people look at you sideways. You know, are you are you flaky or you're untrustworthy? Some other kind of hidden uh, idea about the, the concept of being an entrepreneur. Now, fortunately, that's changed a bit since, yeah. since those days. But for me, that was definitely the case. And I probably, I probably felt a bit of social pressure. And, and for that reason, I ended up pursuing a career in the corporate world, in technology and in healthcare, a couple of other little fields. And so over many years, uh, you know, I started out as a junior marketer, uh, all the while having a business on the side. I've all had a business consistently, but uh, I've but within those corporate set, I sort of navigated towards a destination that was uh, really around launch strategy and uh, the the training of brand marketers in global corporations. So, you know, in, in some of these, uh, you know, very big companies, they know that they're going to be launching a, a product that they've got a lot of hope in. And so they need somebody like me to come in and kind of assess the marketplace, think about the opportunity and develop a marketing plan to launch and then uh, take that thing into, into existence. So the, uh, the early part, of a business as, as it is true with a brand as well. If you start strong, it tends to have a really pronounced effect on the life cycle of a business or brand. So that was really my specialty. So I've been blessed. I've had a chance to live all around the world and my family and I have been uh, treated well in that corporate world. But even though I, I like it and I've learned a lot, at heart, I'm, I'm still a small business entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if we could go through uh, and talk about maybe some of those those four major challenges um, mm. that that we experience, and, and maybe just kind of talk about well, how do we counteract that? Yeah. Um, so AJ was the first one. Money was it, is that what you said? Yes. Okay. So, money concerns, and and you know what, Josh, I, I would actually bundle um, money and time in together. So those concerns that come up when we get to the root cause of that, it's because there's some perennial shortcomings for small business entrepreneurs. On the whole, we're wonderful people, I like to think, but on the whole, we're terrible at having a well-articulated plan and we have very poor psycho uh, psychology around risk and probability, right? And that's a good thing because it helps us kind of launch out of the gate and just do something bold. If any of us looked at the statistics, no one would ever start a business, right? Right. But, but we do it because we have to, we've got fire in our belly. But the issue is that's not enough to really sustain you into the years after launch. So. It, the answer, the short answer to those first two is really about having a really well articulated plan and a good psychology of risk. And there's a way to achieve that, fortunately. For the other two, you know, I, I think the answer to imposter syndrome and just not, you know, not feeling sure if you, you should be the woman or man at the top uh, as the boss, I think a lot of that is just about a commitment to improving your own capacity, growing as a business owner in, in, in terms of growing in, in your knowledge and understanding of what, what it means to be in business. So that means having a relentless desire to learn. And I, I you know, I, I think of people like Sir Richard Branson, who is clearly an outstanding business person, uh, or for that matter, Bill Gates, these two individuals, which we all think of those as being icons in business, but actually they are relentless learners today. You know what I mean? They, they will continue to soak up information. And I think that has a profound effect on somebody's uh, ability to increase and, and forever improve. So that's the final. And the, the last one about, uh, you know, no clear path forward, which really nags on people who are ambitious by nature or, or kind of really keen to grow a business, but not sure how to get from where they are today to a big bright future. Again, this comes down to a, metho a methodology and a plan. So it's, it's not enough just to write down, I'd like to be a millionaire. It right. needs to be a stepwise approach with milestones and, and a logical path forward. So um, in my book, I kind of touch on these themes and, and uh, Josh, I don't want to jump ahead, but um, there's two other things that I'd bring up if I could. Yeah. One is that while I found these four common worries, there was a really interesting uh, fact that I stumble upon. And that is that while it's not always true that somebody who has those traditional markers of business success, like lots of money in the bank or a thousand customers turning up every week, those people tended to only be moderately happier than the average business owner. Hmm. But the opposite direction was absolutely true, which is to say, if somebody said that they felt more fulfilled in business and happier day to day, then actually they heavily over-indexed 
for business success. So it seems to go that direction rather than I'll get successful and that'll make me happy. It seems to be, interestingly enough, more so the other direction. If I can find fulfillment and happiness, I believe it tends to be causal for business success. So uh, let me touch on what I found was three pillars that were really frequently uh, mentioned by these happier and more fulfilled business owners. Perfect. And I think this is wonderful because you can start to engineer this now into your business, even if you're just starting out or if you're a solo entrepreneur or whatever it might be. So those three things, the first one, this one's a little bit, in, in, in my mind, this is the toughest because it actually points to having some structure in place. But happier business owners absolutely say that they feel that there's a degree of predictability in their business. So what mm. this means is they have a sense of what's coming next month, next season, next year, They've been in, a, in the game for a while probably and they have a feeling for the rhythm and patterns in their business. Okay, so that one's a bit hard to fast track. But I would say that having structure... But the next two are absolutely things you can do now. So the second one, and this was the single largest factor in increasing happiness and fulfillment for a business owner, mm -hmm. it's a social element. So, for example, mm -hmm. if you have employees, or even if you've got outsourced, you know, a virtual assistant or a graphic designer on the other side of the world, whatever it might be, right. if you like engaging with these people, and in fact, you choose to spend time with them even if you weren't working, then this seems to be really supportive of your happiness. Or for people who are just in business for themselves, they might say, you know what, my husband or my wife, uh, they're not in my business, but I know they've got my back and they're really supporting me in my entrepreneurial journey. Yeah. So this idea of a social quality was really protective of someone's happiness. And then the final one, and this, you know, as a kid that was brought up by uh, religious parents, I guess this cuts the heart for me a little bit, but the notion that you might have a, an articulated and deliberate ongoing effort for social good in your business. And that can be anything from a grand plan for, you know, charities or whatever, all the way through to a really consistent but modest approach of saying something like, I really want to take care of my staff. Uh, you know, I, I'll give you one example, if I may. I, I, one of the businesses that I examined was here in the US, a guy had a chain, a small chain of uh, laundromats and dry cleaners. And he said that his staff never wanted to leave working for him. And this was an immense source of pride for him. And so he would go to great lengths to do things like help out with college support for his employees, kids, stuff like this that he didn't have to do. And you know, the bottom line is this final pillar of social good is really about doing something that doesn't return to you immediately in your business, but just because it's a good thing to do and it's an idea that you believe in. Uh, and, and you know, I'm speculating now, Josh, but I think the reason why this is so helpful is everyone in business has weeks that are good and weeks that are bad. You oh, know, yeah. we, it comes up, right? But if you can point beyond this week's short time horizon and say, you know what, that other thing I'm doing, that just remains a good thing to do all the time. I think it, it, it's a, it creates a bit of a harbor in the tempest and, and it helps to sustain you in those worse weeks or better weeks. And you know, the, the bottom line is Josh, the entrepreneur, the business owner listening right now to your show, they're the most important asset in their business. And so if they're sustained, they're more likely to be putting out their best work and that's going to have the most pronounced effect on their business. Um, so in terms of predict, I'm going to go through each of these here. Um, mm -hmm. So in terms of predictability in business, um, I, I know, uh, you know, when some people uh, are kind of getting started and, and let's say they kind of get started maybe as a freelancer or, you know, yeah. they're just kind of really working solo. It can be very tempting to believe that sales is a result of market forces or forces beyond my control, right? right? Man, people just aren't coming through the front door and buying my product. <laughs> I don't know, the ads just aren't working right now. Right. Um, and, and so what would you say to that person? Well, I, I think it's a very natural and human thing to do, but in the same way that people look at the sales transaction, or they might look at the marketing tactic, the, what I call the execution, which is the E in the core marketing method, by the way. These are the last really downstream effect of a lot of stuff that came earlier. Yeah. And so you can do a whole lot before you ever get to that point of a sale being realized or not, of a client being landed or not, of a marketing tactic winning or failing. It, there's a whole bunch of stuff you do beforehand. And that other stuff, which includes things like planning, developing a good understanding of success metrics, uh, a whole bunch of stuff. They're, 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 they tend to be the less sexy things for entrepreneurs, but they help to make us feel more stable. And you know, corporations, big global corporations, uh, in many ways they can be a little bit boring and not terribly exciting, 
But uh, you know, as I can say as somebody who more than once has taken brands from zero to a billion dollars in annual revenue, I can tell you that there's a kind of um, cold consistency to what they do that helps to create stability. I mean, mm. think about it. We don't very often hear about the Toys R Us or Sears going under. Those are such exceptional events that they make the, the nightly news, right? Mm -hmm. Most businesses, global businesses, they just tick ahead doing 103, 104% of last year. They're like, an, I, I always use the analogy of saying they're like a tanker on the ocean that yeah. is, is impossible to knock over and it's slow and boring, but it always gets to its destination. Yeah. And small business owners tend to be more like the jet ski, which bounces around at a million miles an hour on the ocean. They look like a heck of a lot of fun. They, they go like a, a, you know, a bat out of hell, but here's the problem. They get knocked over easily and they often don't have a, an endpoint in mind. So I think learning from both can be a really useful idea. You know, it reminds me of, uh, you know, The Secret, uh, that film that came out, you know, over 10, 12 years ago. You know, there was one line that I, I, I actually committed to memory because it was just so impactful. And that is, you know, people look at their current state of affairs and say, this is who I am. That's not who you are. That's who your current state of affairs are who you were, who you were previously. We're always living in this residual. And right. so what you're experiencing yeah. in business today is based on the activity that you were doing, I don't know, small business, you know, maybe 90 days, 60, 90 days ago, maybe even 30 days ago. Right. Um, right. But, you know, so if you're really grinding it out on sales and marketing right now and you're doing all the right stuff, hmm. you'll enjoy the fruits of that but it's just going to take a little while uh, for revenues to catch up, for you know the business to get closed and that sort of thing. And so um, I think it's really important uh, that we say, well, what is, and this is, I think, where it gets really helpful to have someone who can act as a CFO with your company because they can help identify what are the activities that are the revenue drivers. Yeah. And so then you set benchmarks for that and say, listen, you know, for us, for example, you know, we have, uh, we're getting better at this. Um, but, you know, I know that the more video emails that I can send out to, uh, you know, people that are in our pipeline or, you know, we're, we have relationships with the better. So if I can send a hundred video emails a month, that's my bottom line. Wow. I know that's what I need to continue growing. So that's that's one metric we watch, you know, and all these other follow-up things that are all revenue drivers. Yeah. Uh, and that's how we grow. And, and if you're not setting goals for that, I, and, and again, I'm kind of extrapolating uh, yeah. what you've advised based on things that, I'll be honest, like we're we're always trying to improve on these things, but we're not perfect. And mm. and so I think now that we have, you know, a CFO that's kind of helping us, you know, set some of these uh, yeah. goals, it's good because it really helps build that predictability and stability in business. Because that's right. really what it all comes down to. It's like my wife is a family therapist and it could be tempting for her to say, well, I don't have that many clients that week, this week, so therefore, I must not be a very good therapist. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's exactly. like, no, that actually probably has very little to do. It probably has to do with the fact that maybe you're just not, you're not getting as much visibility right. as, as you should have 60, 90 days ago when right, people exactly. were first being introduced. They were at the top of the funnel. Yeah. Uh, and we just know that that sales cycle takes, you know, maybe 30 days for most people before they pick up the phone and or, you know, schedule an appointment or something like that. Exactly. And, you know, the, the other thing to, to think about with that is that uh, I always say that executions, tactics and executions that you do, and they're going to look different for every business, but they should always work backwards like this. So mm -hmm. a tactical ex execution that you invest in, even if you're not spending money, you're still investing focus and time and energy. So there's an investment, right? And in business, we're in the process of uh, making bets. And the idea is actually that we make bets where the risk is in our favor, not against. So I always use the analogy of uh, too many business entrepreneurs are really like gamblers walking into a casino where they're full of passion, but they put chips down on the table. And you know what, when that roulette wheel spins, eventually they're gonna lose because the odds are not in their favor. <laughs> but the other person making a bet in that scenario is the house. And the casino knows that their odds are in the casino's favor. So they, they will continue to bet. Of course, there's a risk every time, but they know that it will play out in their favor eventually. And so what I try and say is get a healthy view of risk where you use insights, 
over assumption. So you don't draw from just gut instinct only. There's a room for passion and agility in business for sure, but you make your bets based on insights. And now working backwards, the way I suggest that happens is you choose tactical executions that try and deliver upon a particular imperative, what I call a strategic imperative. And the idea here is that you've for the year you've set just uh, you know lifting something from stephen covey here i always like to to put down three wildly important goals i've got three businesses at the moment josh three different businesses and each of them have three wildly important goals the biggest businesses in the world including a really large health care company that a few years ago i did work for here in the us this was an enormous business with multiple billion dollar brands but the president could stand up and say to the whole organization, 75,000 employees, there's three things we're gonna do this year. Right? Mm -hmm. So if a company like that can do it, well, you and I and every small business owner can as well, right? So wow. when, you've got three, when you've got three big goals, then all you need to do is say, okay, if I pick the first one of those three big goals, I just wanna choose between two to four strategic imperatives. These are things that will happen that if I achieve those two to four things, then that big goal will be recognized, right? So the big goal is often something like become the top three of business podcasts in the world or some sort of big dream that's a big right. goal to stretch for and the strategic strategic imperative uh the things that have to happen for that to take place so it might be uh i don't know you know broadcast a high quality program every day or something you know you've got some sort of a strategic imperative that will allow that to happen and then underneath that those are the tactics, the things that I do to make sure that happens. So it's uh, it's a um, it's working backwards like that. So for that, if you if you build that model, it means that a business person is not doing random ad hoc tactics, just you know shooting from the hip and hoping for the best. They're always delivering on an imperative, which will bring you up to that big goal. And uh, again, I know it's not very sexy sounding, and it's not what entrepreneurs like to hear, but it's it's really useful information. You know, and I do find though that a lot of what it takes to be successful in business, sales, marketing in particular, is finding something that works and you just grind at it right. over and over and over and over. I mean, it's just like, yep. and it's, you know, and there's so many other flash in the pan things that come and go and you right. get shiny object syndrome, entrepreneurs yep. and, uh, listen and when you find something that works uh you know and i just what i would i say when i hear stuff or i'll have employees that will say hey we should be doing this mm -hmm. i say you know what we're, what we're doing right now is working very well that's great for them but yep. for us we need to stay in our lane because huh. this lane absolutely works and um you know you know maybe maybe we can expand into that area but right now but you know i know that I, I, it's, you know, just keeping that focus. Um, okay, so listen, person who's listening to our conversation, you've been listening in now. <laughs> and so AJ just listed out a great activity. You've all got homework. So <laughs> here's what I want you to do. Break out your pen and paper, just like I've done. I want you to go, first off, this will be helpful. You go to ajrollsy.com and go to her, go to AJ's blog. And I want you to find the article that says, want to be a happy entrepreneur? You'll need these three things. And that's what AJ has been talking about regarding stability, predictability, uh, having good people around, thinking of others first. I want you to read the article and I want you to set some goals for yourself on what you are going to do so that you can accomplish these things reason why AJ's I want my listeners to be happy you're in business awesome. for yourself you deserve happiness that's the first thing that's your first homework assignment number two is if you do not have your three big goals written for this year then you need to spend some time in contemplation grab a cup of coffee go hang out in the backyard or go out in the back terrace or whatever and figure out what are the three big most important goals that you can achieve over the next rest of the year 12 months and then you come up with the for each of these and, and aj is this correct you come up yeah. with three or so strategic imperatives so that you can get that goal. how what do i need to do 
in exactly. order to get that big goal done. Is that right? Yeah, so Josh, you, you, you gave a great example before. You said that, you know, if you send out your video uh, emails that you get a certain kind of response, and this yeah. is a tactic that you realize has become reliable. So what you might have been able to do is say something like, well, you know, X percent of those emails returns a particular behavior that's important to us from a customer. So because you know that, because you've been able to test it out, it might be something like you want, for example, Josh, you might want 1,000 new high value clients. That might be your wild goal for the year, one of the three big goals. And you've said, you know what? I know the most uh, effective way for us to do this is to push out these video emails. So the strategic imperative usually has a hard number attached to it. So it's something like we get 10% of these emails converted to become a customer. And I want 1,000, so I need to push out 10,000 emails. So that the, the strategic imperative would be craft and, and uh, broadcast 10,000 video emails, whatever that number is, right? Mm -hmm. But the idea is there's a hard number in it. And so that you can, you can then go back and the tactical efforts would be things like uh, create a beautiful email, make sure that I have the equipment set up, these kinds of practical things to do so that that strategic imperative can be met. And then, you know, if you zoom out to say five years, which is a really typical planning um, horizon, if every year you've delivered on three of these big goals, then after five years, you're doing dramatic and drastically wonderful, amazing things, right? And so think backwards, Josh, 2015 was just five years ago. And so like this, you're much likely to realize some really remarkable uh, big dreams as opposed to just kind of pushing in and having another year go past. You know, that's the worst. Nobody should be stagnating when actual uh, success is right there to be grabbed. Yeah. So AJ, and by the way, to, to our listeners, I apologize. Sometimes our, our connection is kind of oh, blipped out a little bit. Um, now, AJ, you give away the book, The Drowning Entrepreneur. And to get this book, you give it away for free. It looks like, right? Yeah. You know what? The, the truth is, Josh, this is more of a passion for me than anything else. I, I really, I'm offended at the, at the failure and stagnation rate of small businesses when I know that a, uh, a flourishing small business is a force for good in the local community. So I, I just want to see businesses succeed. And uh, to that end, Josh, in addition to the book, uh, I, I was recently uh, on another podcast just like this, and I really love speaking to people like yourself that are helping businesses and equipping them with, with more knowledge. But uh, I made an offer to the audience of that podcast, and, and I'll do the same to your audience if you like, and that is if they go to AJ Rolsey forward slash tour, I'm going to be visiting 53 cities around the US. So if you're, uh, if you're you know, if your listeners are based in the US, it's probable that they're going to be somewhere near these 53 cities, then I'd love them to come out and participate in a two and a half hour workshop where we kind of wow. dig into some of these details in a lot more kind of a, a depth, you know, and, and it's very practical. A, 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 an entrepreneur will be thinking about their business. And, you know, normally I'd be charging $60 for this, as which I think is a steal anyway for two and a half hours. It'll be myself and a panel of local experts. But because I want your listeners to really get moving, I'm, uh, I'm going to make this a no-brainer. If they go to that site, they can uh, take up the same offer that I extended to another podcast audience. They can register for just $1 and come along to that event. Think about getting the ball rolling on their business with a more methodical way to grow towards their biggest goals. Wow. So I'm in Orlando and I'm looking at your, your schedule world tour right now. Uh, <laughs> and it looks like I've got Tampa and Jacksonville. Uh, how do how do we know what the dates are? Uh, you know, actually, thanks for pointing that out. The the uh, the, the dates are being updated even as mm -hmm. we speak. So so uh, if people hit the the link button, the first thing they'll actually get is a free mini course, which I just give you to, with some background right. concepts, some of the stuff we've spoken about. And in that mini course, you'll click on the link for your city. But I can tell you that uh, you folks down there in Florida, uh, from memory, that's going to be in uh, just in late March. So I'll be right down there pretty soon. <laughs> nice, nice. All I'm right. Well, AJ, it looks like we're going to meet up then. Awesome, man. <laughs> well, terrific. So again, AJ Rolsey, the website is ajrolsey.com and you want to go and it's R-O-L-L-S-Y. So it's ajrolsy.com forward slash tour. Um, and also you've got the free book. You've got the $1 ticket to attend the event. Uh, and you said it's two and a half hour long. Man, you are gonna have a busy calendar, my friend. <laughs> yeah, 53 of these. I'm looking forward to it, but I am definitely gonna be exhausted by the end. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, listen, AJ, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, you're, again, author and founder of Core Marketing Method. And again, your website, ajrolsey.com. Great insights. Uh, again, go get the free book, 
uh, so that you can, uh, it's called The Drowning Entrepreneur. Uh, all you do is just click on the red uh, button there and it's claim your book. And I have to check my email so uh, and, and see if that got delivered to me. But I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, really, really great stuff. Don't forget, listeners of The Thoughtful Entrepreneur, do your homework. I uh, want you to be 10 times happier over the next uh, three to five years. AJ, thank you so much for everything. It's my pleasure, Josh. Thanks for having me.